is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and it's going to be a wild one, as usual, folks. We're already getting some volatility this morning. Boy, you look at the action on Friday, right? The action we got yesterday pales in comparison when you traded about 200 points from the highs we had Friday to where we opened the session on Sunday night from about 42.17 down to about 4,020. We almost got a 3,900 handle in the futures. Early Sunday, last yesterday, chopping around at 4,020. Opened my eyes this morning uh, between about 5 and 6 in the morning. I said, man, market's charging higher, right? We got S&Ps up about 30 points, 35 points. I saw them right then. I said, okay, maybe clawing back some of the losses on Friday. Not quite getting it done yesterday. Maybe the market uh, taking a moment to reconsider the sell-off that they had on Friday. But guess what, folks? Give it a few hours, and that's not the story, man. We're only up 13 points right now. We're trading at 4,044 on the S&Ps. Keeping in mind, Friday's action, we were above 4,200 on the highs on Friday. NASDAQ 100, we've been giving back some of those gains as well. We were up at 12,660. We've given up 100 points from the overnight highs. We're still up by 64. That's half a percent. But boy, you had the NASDAQ 100 pushing 150 points in the positive, even 160 points in the positive when you got that acceleration at about 4 a.m. Eastern time. The Dow this morning up about 92 points, 32,167. Crew with some volatility continuing, man. Crude from 97.66 down to 94.49. Excuse me, let's jump over to the DXY, 108.62. You talk about some volatility, excuse me, volatility Friday up through Monday. Monday's action chopping around about 108.80. And we're sitting just under that level, down about 21 ticks on the dollar index. We jump over to gold, negative about $7 in this morning on gold at 1742. I'm going to take off this short-term Fibonacci. I'm going to pull this back on a weekly, pull it back even for on a five-year weekly. What I wanted to get to on this gold contract is we are approaching a level here that we've seen as support. Now, you're at the 382 of the entire run higher, which is pretty cool. When you look at where it was in 2018 from 1167, you trade up to a high during COVID, the year 2020 at 2089, right? Since then, the gold contract, and you're looking at a chart now that for the better part of a year and a half, we've found an area of support, whether it's 1742 or you could say the 1700 area. So you're talking about a $40 range where this thing has found support. Once you enter the 1740 area down to about 1700, the 382 lines up at 1743 in that area. Nonetheless, gold coming right into that area right now at 1743. We got dollar strength sitting right at almost 109 on the dollar index. Big numbers, man. Let's jump over to the yen real quick if we're talking gold because the yen has been on fire, man. We talked to our man Teddy Kegstad tomorrow at 40 past the hour. If you haven't checked out the Tiger Forex report, folks, Forex controlling a lot of what's going on right now. You control Forex, you control yields, and the markets that are related, therefore, everything is interrelated, folks. We're all getting a lesson uh, in the Tiger's Den yesterday saying we're all going to become commodities traders. Yeah, you were getting a real lesson in terms of how currencies are affected by yields, which are affected by central banks, which are affected, of course, by inflation in the economy, all of that combining to impact the effect of markets, commodities, et cetera, all interrelated in many ways. And we're getting a real lesson. The yen, I mean, you're seeing yen weakness, dollar strength, that going to play onto a tough scenario for gold when you have the yen charging higher up to the basically highs of 139 recently. Remarkable when you look at the yen trading at 115 in March. Now for some context here, okay, the gold contract in March was pushing 2000 or so. So very related, right? You better have some idea of what's gonna happen with the dollar, with the dollar yen, if you're trading the gold contract, because if you see the yen spiking above that area, 
then yeah, gold is going to face some tough woes, man. If you see the yen trading above 139, 140. The other way to consider this is maybe you see this as a double top in yen. If that's the case, gold should get a lift from that 1740, $1,700 error. If you haven't checked out the, the gold report, folks, my dad's newsletter, weekly newsletter, check that out as well. Uh, we got a sale going on, say 50% off your first month right on the front page of TFNN. That sale only runs through this coming weekend, long weekend, as we end the summer. Pretty remarkable. All right, let's jump around to some of the headlines we got pulled up this morning. We'll start it off with J.P. Morgan, the bulls of Wall Street, we'll call them. Uh, they, are, they are somewhat alone in this call, and I'll put it that way, but it is interesting. Now, they're focusing on jobless claims, and I'm pointing this out because – I think this is an example of skewed data, and if this is the bullish case on stocks, then you better watch out, folks, because they're talking about jobless claims indicating a potential rally over the next 12 months. A reading of the labor market that spells bad news for the economy is actually bullish. Weekly jobless claims are tracking more than 10 percent higher than the prevailing three-month average. Historically, that's been associated with a recession every single time. Here's where I'll stop you there, okay? You're 10 percent higher percentages on small numbers can be deceiving. I say it all the time, folks. Percentages on small numbers can be deceiving. Why do I say that in this case? Because we just had jobless claims drop to like 190, maybe 200, right? What was the low? Something like that, 207, 203. Were, were we in the 180s, 190s uh, one week or two? We might have been. Maybe they have the chart down here. Um, but the point being is that's not even indicative of a healthy economy, as in that's that's beyond a healthy economy. That's probably indicative of economy that's heating up too much that risks inflation, which is where we are. So the point being is we have weekly jobless claims tracking higher, but you could make the case, but they're, they're just tracking higher back to a new normal of where they should be because historically they charge so low as we were coming out of the pandemic. So if this is the bull case and that's what they're basing it on, that's kind of dicey, folks. Uh, historically, that's been associated with a recession every single time. Still, the S&P 500 has tended to gain 11% on average following the following 12 months, citing data going back to 1970. So they're saying we have a weekly jobless claim number that's 10% higher from the prevailing three-month average. And historically, every time that's happened, we have a recession coming. But the markets had already priced that in. And so what had happened is the markets gained 11% in the next year every time that happened because probably the market had priced it in. If you start hearing stuff like that, folks, keep in mind, okay, that yes, you never want to say this time it's different, okay? But when you're basing it off something like weekless job, weekly jobless claims that have been skewed pretty dramatically coming out of the pandemic – and you're talking about only tracking 10% higher than the prevailing three-month three average, percentages on small numbers can be really deceiving, folks. That would be akin to what if jobless claims went down to 100,000 because we were coming out of the pandemic. And then what did they do? They inched up to 110,000. You say, oh, my goodness, that's 10% higher. Yeah, it's only 10,000 jobs, all right? Small numbers, percentages, very deceiving. Uh, I wanted to bring that up because anytime I'm seeing a bull case made, because it's so easy to make the bear case right now. Show me the bull case, right? If this is the bull case, I don't think that's a good bull case, man. There might be some good bull cases out there, but I'm not going to base it off of a 10% rise in weekly jobless claims, somehow historically indicating that we got double-digit returns coming over the next 12 months. S&Ps, folks, we're positive by 15. We got the NASDAQ 100 positive by 82. All the markets in the green. We'll be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. Be right back, folks. Don't miss it. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vistagold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vistagold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vistagold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vistagold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now. Positive by 13 points. NASDAQ 100 positive by 74. Dow positive by 82. We got all the markets in the green right now, but giving up some of those gains over the last few hours of trading. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. We talk to Kevin every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, folks. You can watch his outstanding program, Fast Market, every trading day at 12 noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network. They break down the day's market action, folks, for the entire hour, 12 to 1. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups, talking about options, talking about defined risk in every trade setup they have. Great way to learn that market. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Interesting start to the day, a very resilient market we have here with, it seems like, some of the data working against the market, but it's crude oil. Look at the move in crude oil this morning a little bit. Straight, you know, there's a heavyweight battle going on right now in crude oil, Tommy, with all the stories out of um, Europe and Germany and the complete disaster that their energy markets appear to be in with the counter argument of recession and inflation and what that's doing to the overall demand uh, side of the ledger for crude oil. And so, you know, the big rally that, that we had yesterday followed by a little bit of good news from Germany that they're doing a better job of collecting and, and getting stockpiles in, um, in their energy. We'll see if that plays out. I still think crude oil has got some significant issues go going into the fall and winter, uh, Tommy. So we're going to watch crude oil real close. A pretty resilient stock market. You know, Tommy, Sunday night when the futures opened, the least surprising thing of my entire weekend was that they were going to open lower after what happened Friday. But since then, they've been fairly resilient. And starting day, at least starting the day today, in the green on all four major indices. 
Yeah, I like the take, man. Sunday night, I found myself opening the Think or Swim uh, app on my mobile phone, Kevin, and uh, I was cringing a little bit at about 10 past six, you know, thinking, where are they going to be, man? And they were only 10, 15 points down, even that, right? I said, okay, all right, not that bad with how the market charged uh, lower on Friday, and we're sitting basically kind of where we closed out Friday's action right but now. Not too bad considering the absolute destruction that we got on Friday. It was interesting, man. We talked to you Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I always say, because we get so much great economic data sometimes on Fridays in particular. I say, Kevin, we're going to know a lot more about this market the next time I talk to you, man. And since we haven't talked to you since the chairman's speech, what did you think about the eight-minute speech and how the market took about 60 seconds to maybe two minutes after the chairman's speech to kind of figure out where they wanted to go? But what is your take as we come into September and even next year with what the chairman had to say, man, about, you know, longer rates staying forward? Or or, or do you imagine that's just the message and, and we meander as we go out through the future? Yeah, I, I, I think... The surprising thing, the, the, the thing that surprised the markets was his overall tone and how almost angry he was when he spoke for eight minutes. And, Tommy, think about, put yourself in Jerome Powell's uh, p uh, position, right? He, his number one job is to fight inflation. And he raised rates by a quarter, 25 basis points in March, by 50 basis points in May, uh, 75 in June, 75 in July, Tommy. And since the July meeting, the administration has spent about $1.1 trillion in terms of the Inflation Reduction Act spending and the forgiveness of student loans. So if you're Jerome Powell, you got to be saying, I'm, I'm killing myself here trying to fight inflation, and you're not, you're, you're not helping. So I think... That was part of his tone that he gave. And it was really interesting. And I thought the markets, you know, uh, he, like I said, he was he, he put away the feather and brought out the hammer uh, on Friday, Tommy. And I think that's what the markets fed off of. Rates are going to go up and they're not going to go back down after that. Yeah, you know, I was watching the eight-minute speech, and there were a couple moments where I said, ooh, and I and I quickly yeah. glanced at, at the futures, you know, to see, well, ooh, I said, ooh, and, uh, and they were okay, and then they bounced. I said, ah, oh, maybe maybe I'm just, you know, reading it wrong, but that was there, there were a few wild moments there where you see, you know, just the, the phrases of the eight minutes and, and how strong and direct I thought he was, uh, but the market took a few minutes, and I think they agreed on, on that path. Uh, we go from there, Kevin. We're coming into a long weekend, and then we come into September, man. We start getting economic numbers for the month of August. We go right into a Fed meeting. That's all the focus right now. We get the tenure at about 3.1%. We still got some earnings coming out. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 today? Two companies with earnings coming out after the bell today, Tommy. CrowdStrike and Chewy, the online uh, pet supplies company. And then in the third, we'll trade Boeing. Boeing's you know, slowly but surely starting to emerge from these problems that they've had. They're delivering planes. They're, they're, they, they, you know, the, all the numbers for Boeing seem to go up. So we'll trade Boeing in the third segment. The other two earnings before the open tomorrow morning. Yeah, CrowdStrike, Chewy, two great companies, but we've had some pullbacks, man. CrowdStrike almost up to 300 last year. We're trading at 192. Uh, Chewy, the food delivery business. Boy, I got a downtrend channel on my chart, Kevin, going back all the way to February of 2021 at $121. We just touched the upper portion of that trend line at about 50 bucks. We're sitting at 38. And yeah, Boeing, you talk about uh, a bounce here. In June, you're trading at 113. We're at 165. I have it back within the channel line that it was kind of trading in in the better part of 2021. Uh, give us a little teaser of Boeing, if you can, Kevin. At 165, we started the year off at about 200. Is this a, a longer term game, maybe for investors? That you know, America needs an airline, uh, not an airline. Excuse me, a, a plane maker, uh, as in Airbus and Boeing. So I imagine at some point in the future, or or do you see maybe a potential for even a shorter term run to the upside still from 165? Put you on the spot a little on Boeing. You know, you know, Boeing sold off, Tommy, because the drip, drip, drip of news stories was all negative, right? The 787 Dreamliner, the 737 Max, all the problems with management and, and overall. But now it's kind of reversed, and the news is all pretty positive, right? 
the 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 reconfirmation of the the 787 dream line remember tommy they have 120 of those sitting already built and when they are they get each one certified and are able to deliver that they, they've already started to deliver the planes that is free cash flow coming into that company so with, with that uh and the constant upgrades and um the more production of the 737 Max, which is their bread and butter. That's the one that's going to be their big seller. You know, th- th- this company is on the verge of starting a pretty significant comeback here, Tommy. I appreciate the take, man. It's remarkable when you put this thing on a chart. I just put it on a monthly on the Thinkorswim platform, man. You're almost back to the COVID lows in terms of that acceleration, but you actually almost made it back this year alone to where Boeing was trading at in 2007, let alone the highs that we had on the run-up. Uh, and, yeah, I imagine at some point, man, you know, they're getting their ducks in order, and it seems like I see more and more orders. I saw something about Taiwan, I believe, right? Yesterday, the last couple of days or something, ordering uh, Boeing 737s. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time you take with us Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, man. You have a great one. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. They're going to be talking about three great stocks, CrowdStrike, Chewy, and Boeing. Yeah, Boeing's an interesting one, man. Been looking at that for a while. Maybe it's a back within that trend line channel. Check out the program. They'll be talking about it today on Fast Market at 12. We'll be right back for the open, folks. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps. We open up 13 points, 4,044. You're looking at an NASDAQ up by 67, Dow up by 101. All the markets off of the highs you had overnight. Uh, let's jump over to Apple. We had a question in the YouTube Tiger stand from our man Bestford talking about Apple and where we see it potentially going. So Apple, quite a pullback from where it was Friday. Overnight, you catch a little bit of a bid with the market. You give some of that back. We open about two-thirds percent in the positive. You take a look at Apple, even on a weekly. Okay, real quick. Weekly, from the COVID lows of $54 up to a high of 182. Where do you pull back to? You bounce right at the 382, folks. How about that, right? The June lows in the market, you pull back to 132. This thing charges higher. Now, the one thing I talked about, man, we're gonna go back to a daily real quick. Apple's got 16 billion shares outstanding. And this equity traded from, we'll call it 130 for simple math, up to 175. You're talking about $45. $45, I have to do it in my head, right? $45 for a company that has 16 billion shares outstanding. So what is that? 16, 32, 48, 64, 64, 720 billion dollars in market cap. Apple added from where it was in June up to where it was on August 17th, about two months. You hear that? Yeah, that's right, right? Yeah, I just do the numbers in my head. 16, 320, 640. Yeah, about $700 billion in market cap. Apple added from where you were in June up to the highs you just made in August. Now, if we take a look at the trend we had there, if you're talking about a pullback of this recent run lower, 158 would be the 382. We made it to a low about 160, pretty close to that, excuse me, pretty close to that net level. Now, the one thing I'll say, we'll take this off for clarity. Let me take that Fibonacci number off. Looking at some volume numbers, the day of August 17th, when it made its high, 79,542,000 shares traded, actually more volume than Friday's acceleration lower. That's pretty insane. When you think about the move that we had on Friday, the volume we had in the markets, the acceleration of markets trading 3 to 4% lower. Apple, the biggest stock out there, trades down about $8 almost, $7. That alone, $100 billion in market cap wiped out. But what happened? You couldn't even do more volume than you did at the high. Apple has been overperforming uh, this market consistently in terms of you got the S&P 800 points off of the high. You do have Apple now 20, okay, points off of this high. But to back things out, the high is 182.94. You're $20 off that price level. That's about an 11 or 2 or 12% pullback from where you were. Folks, NASDAQ 100 was at 16,500. You're 4,000 points off. NASDAQ 100 is 25% off of the highs, and you got Apple sitting 11 or 12% off the highs, okay? S&Ps are about 18% off the highs. Apple, only 11 or 12% off the highs. So if you're looking for somewhere to hide, Apple could be a good spot. The one tough thing is you just accelerated and added $700 billion in market cap over the period of two months. Uh, if you're looking to get in Apple, you can scale in. Maybe you wait for it to backtrack a bit with the market trading at 4,000. The one thing I'll say, folks, is that, you know, we have a dicey scenario leading up to the next Fed meeting, I would say. The economic data, when we get non-farm payrolls, all right, and we'll go over this after the next break. I'll pull the dates. You get non-farm payrolls, you get CPI data, okay? Those are going to be two very important numbers as we come into the Fed meeting. Now, as I mentioned, we're coming into a long weekend. We're going to go away for the long weekend. We're going to come back on Tuesday, and we have two weeks until that Fed meeting. The market is going to get ahead of wherever it thinks that Fed is going. And right now, I'll tell you, the market's still sitting above 4,000, folks, okay? And there's nothing that has changed that dramatically, okay? Look at how quickly the market dropped from 4,100 to 3,600 last time. You're talking about one, two, three, four days you traded from 4,157 down to 37. 44, you lost 10% over four days. The S&P only did about three to 4% already, okay? If the market really figures out that they were off on the path of the Fed, something to pay attention to, attention to in terms of the pullback that's possible as we head into that net, next Fed meeting. In this market, you know, you had overnight strength, but not since about 6 a.m., man. We're going on three and a half hours of negative prices in the S&Ps right now, and you're only positive by eight points coming into uh, the opening bell. All right, jumping around to some of the other headlines we had up here. Morgan Stanley. So first we had, right, what do we talk about? We talked about who was it? J.P. Morgan talking about uh, a potential? Yes. So J.P. Morgan is the one that's saying potentially 
that weekly jobless claims are indicative of a market that could rise over the next 12 months. Now we're going to talk about home prices. U.S. housing downturn has further to go as rates rise. The one thing I wanted to comment here, <coughs> everybody talks about the housing market. Oh, man, is it going to cascade lower after the run that it's had higher? Not necessarily the case. A huge slowdown could just be indicative of flat prices. And that's kind of what Goldman says, especially in some markets. Weakening demand is shrinking and imbalance with housing supply and likely means that price growth will slow sharply. Just growth will slow sharply. Pay attention to those words. We expect home price growth to stall completely, averaging 0% in 2023. Folks, a lot of people are going to be A-OK -okay with 0% in 2023 when their houses have shot up sometimes 30 to 40% over a period of two to three years. While outright declines in national home prices are possible and appear quite likely for some reasons, for some regions, let me say that again, while outright declines in national home prices are possible and appear quite likely in some regions, large declines seem unlikely. Their housing assessment comes just days after the Fed issued a first warning that they're going to be hiking those rates. In its analysis, Goldman said a sustained reduction in affordability, waning pandemic tailwind, and recent decline in purchase, purchasing intentions all point to weakening home sales. But pay attention, folks, because in a rising inflationary environment where we have a lack of supply of houses right now, rental prices are through the roof, and that's not going to change, okay? Yeah, it could pair things a bit, but not going to change dramatically. And anytime you have that happening, it's going to weigh on the ability for housing prices to pull back when you have rental prices so high. Of course, it's going to matter. OK, uh, they're both interrelated. But keep that in mind when you hear about, uh, you know, the demise of the housing market, especially, folks, when you have like the wind behind your sails. I mean, in Florida, we are very fortunate in Florida uh, to have the wind behind our sails. Even if you see a little bit of a pullback, folks, we're in a good spot. We got people moving down to Florida, uh, work from anywhere, work from home. Why not come live in Florida as opposed to some of the other higher cost living places that aren't as beautiful as Florida? I know I'm biased a bit, uh, but you're seeing that play out and it's going to continue to play out. And just because the market may pause a bit, maybe you got a 5% pullback in some area. Maybe you got some steep pullbacks in some areas, man, for sure. But overall, you need a place to live. You could make an argument that if you got investment properties everywhere, that you scale that down, right? Go into cash for a time being, because maybe the opportunity cost of missing out right now is not that great to prevent yourself from if there is a pullback. But if you got to live in a spot, folks, and you're going to be paying rent anyway, depending on where you are and what you think of that market, probably not uh, necessary to be thinking about selling a place if you're going to have to go rent one in the meantime. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back in three minutes. We're going to talk a little bit of global bonds. The Bloomberg Index within a percentage point of a 20% pullback. What happened to fixed income, man? Look at that pullback. 20% just from where you were in March. And that is the global bonds. 20%, man. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed Designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps hanging on to gains by about eight points right now. The Russell just dips into the red right now. We got Bitcoin, 20,280. How about that crude contract? Kevin was talking about, man, some volatility. 93.41, you're down more than $4 just from where we were at 3.30 a.m. this morning, right back to where we were yesterday, crude. $4 up, $4 down, right in 24 hours' time. Gold contract down about $7 at 17.42. We jump to notes and bonds. You catch a little bit of a pop there. The 10-year up by five ticks so far this morning. That's your 930 bar. These are 15-minute bars. So the last 12 minutes or so, we're getting higher price and lower yield coming at you. We're talking about a yield right now, 3.08%. The yield on the 10-year, the 30-year up about 15 ticks right now, 136.16. And I jump over the story I was talking about, man. Global bonds, talking about a bear market, and not surprising, folks, when you had everywhere, you had interest rates at zero to negative all over the place. Bloomberg index within a percentage point of a 20% fall from the peak. That would be a bear market. And that's tracking total returns from investment grade government and corporate bonds in, within a percentage point of 20% from its peak. Now, that peak, Yes, is almost January of 2021. Okay, things have been sliding. You see the real drop off really starts. Yeah, you were at minus 5% coming into this year. Now you're at minus 20. So there was a slow slide for 2021, but things really accelerating now. And just for some context here, we're going to take the 30 year, we're going to put that on a five year weekly, we're going to zoom in on the run we had from COVID. You got up to a price of 140.24 on the 10 year. Okay, now there's many different bonds that are in what they're talking about versus just the 10 year US Treasury. All right, but you can see that last year the bond came into 2021 at about 138. You slid to about 131, but this year you've dropped off from 131 down to 117 alone on that. Now you take a look at the 30 year. I've been talking about this, man. If you're a technical trader, watch out on a longer term basis, man. We've had a trend line that's been support since the year 2000. When's it start? January 1st, 2000. That's a simple one to remember. 1100 is the date on the chart for the monthly. You put it on a 30 year, you put it back on as far as I can on think or swim. That brings me back to about 1995, 1996. And bonds been in a, a bull market ever since, man. But guess what? What did we do? We just broke below that trend line, came back up, tested it and pushed lower. What's that mean, folks? That means lower, lower price and higher yield may be coming at us. And with that, we got the S&Ps rolling over to negative prices. You just gave back, folks. The NASDAQ 100, some context here, just overnight, we were at 12,660. You just lost 1.2% in the NASDAQ 100. Don't sleep yet, okay? Volatility not going anywhere right now. 
as we got the NASDAQ 100 dropping 1.2%. Market's only been trading for about 15 minutes just from where you were this morning. And what, what are we doing? We're just back to where we were at 11 o'clock last night. So you get the NASDAQ 100, pops 160 points and gives it all back within the first few minutes of trading. Dicey action, to say the least. Let's jump over to Apple, see how we open. Barely in the positive by about two-tenths for Apple. We jump to Microsoft shares, up about one-tenth percent this morning. We jump over to Google. Jump around those fag stocks, gives back some of the overnight gains like the market this morning. Google, we'll call it flat. Amazon shares this morning, up about half a percent, was up to almost 132 overnight. I think I had another Amazon article up here. They just don't stop. Here it is. How Amazon is giving Rivian an edge in the EV industry. I always joke, man. The Whoever's working PR at Amazon, I know Amazon probably gets the clickbait going just by putting the name in the title, but I swear CNBC and CNBC folks, they are clickbait half the time. Okay, I go over there for some of the economic numbers. Uh, we'll jump over to Best Buys in a moment, but most of their articles are very clickbait um, retail trader geared types of articles. But nonetheless, this one talking about Rivion and Amazon. Nonetheless, Amazon up a little bit today, up about two thirds, uh, excuse me, one third percent, trading at 130. Now, jumping to, what do we just have pulled up here? Best Buy. Quarterly sales drop as inflation weary consumers pull back on spending is the headline. Sales dropped about 13%. Getting into the numbers, they make a buck fifty four oh four versus a buck twenty seven though, and they beat on revenue ten point three three versus ten point two two. They were basically almost flat pre market. We'll jump in and see how they're doing in a moment. Net income three hundred and six million or a buck thirty five a share from seven hundred and thirty four million or two ninety share a year earlier, excluding items they earn that buck fifty seven a share. Online and its stores open at least fourteen months declined by twelve point one percent versus a year ago. Now, that's slightly better than what they were looking for. Okay, they knew it was going to drop about 13%. They only dropped 12.1%. They anticipate a sharper decline in same-store sales in the third quarter. All right? These are some trends, man. He did not give specific guidance. He said it will be more than the 12.1% decline reported for the second quarter. Let's see how they open, man, as these markets roll over. I'm guessing Best Buy is trading lower by 3%. Nope, I'm wrong. They're positive by 5.4%. You see the give back, folks. Remarkable that they're getting a pop here, man. I guess when they beat on the current quarter, but you're talking about a decline of 12.1% same store sales this quarter, and you're talking about next quarter, a decline greater than that. The only thing that can be saving them is that we've already had quite a pullback, folks. And there you go. Uh, a year ago, right? We'll back it up to August of last year. Yeah, we were at about 120, okay? You charged higher into November, that's when they really started to give some ominous details. Now, remember, the comps they're dealing with are some of the better comps out there. As in, that's when they had their comp in August of 2021. Inflation, not really on the radar just yet. They accelerate higher into their November earnings, and then the wake-up comes, and you trade from 142, we'll call it, down to a low in June of $64. Not a lot of people thought Best Buy probably had a 60% pullback in the span of six months in his pocket, but that's what happened. Uh, so expectation, sometimes everything. And yeah, same store sales down more than 12%, but the market thought it was 13%. The ominous thing here is they're not giving you any guidance, man, and they're saying things are going to be worse next quarter. I guess the market's already pricing in some, some tough deals with Best Buy as they're up 6.3% on their numbers. Retailer has noticed some shoppers are trying to stretch the budget. Lower income households and are trading down to lower price TVs or timing purchases for sales events. It's a tough one out there, man, with inflation. At the end of the second quarter, inventory was down 6% compared with the year ago period, up about 16%. They're dealing with some inventory there. They spend a little money on restructuring. Nonetheless, Best Buy, positive on their numbers. Let's jump around to some of the other companies that are moving so far this morning. We talked about Best Buy. Big lots out with their numbers, smaller than expected loss, better than expected revenue, comp store sales fell less than analysts were looking for. So kind of similar to Best Buy, right? Big is their symbol, big lots. And they're up 9%, not bad. So same store sales getting hammered, but beating expectations for big lots and for Best Buy. Yeah, first solar, they're gonna be spending 1.2 billion to expand US manufacturing, a new factory in the Southeast. Uh, Let's see, Baidu, they come out with their numbers, better than expected profit and revenue. They're higher in the pre-market. China-based search engine seeing a recovery in ad sales, stronger demand for its cloud-based offerings. Now this thing, all right, let's jump over to Baidu here. 
because this is an interesting oh look at that down 6.8 percent uh there's your five-year weekly man you talk about a pullback from 350 you're just chopping around for a while right now at 137 down 6.8 percent you're playing any of these chinese stocks man you know yeah you got some room for volatility but any day you can wake up and get news from China that you're down 10, 15%, just like you can on the upside. So keep your risk in check. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. We'll talk a little bit of CPI when we come back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps negative by five points. We turn lower on the open right now, trading at 4,025. All the indices climbing towards the red. NASDAQ 100 barely hanging on to gains by about three points. We may go red. We were just red in the last few minutes. Down by, yeah, all of them in the red right now. Crude continuing to drop. Look at that drop off, man. Crude's off $5 from where you were overnight. I mean, just since we came on the program. Crude has dropped $2 since I started the program at 9 a.m. this morning. Gold contract just kind of hanging out at 1741. So I mentioned talking a little bit of CPI. Now we get jobs numbers this Friday. So we got August non-farm payrolls on Friday, 8.30 a.m. Then CPI numbers, okay, now that's going to be a big one for the Fed. We get it on a Friday. How'd the last Friday go, right? We get it on a Friday going into a long weekend. If we get a super strong jobs number, folks, maybe you got wage growth in there as well. 
watch out because that's going to say the Fed has to act. All right. And the Fed's already told you they're going to continue to act. I think they said something like one data point is not going to be enough or something like that. There were references in those eight minutes that basically said we need continued data before we stop hiking rates. So we get non-farm payrolls this Friday at 8.30, okay? Consumer price index for the month of August, we get that September 13th, okay? So what happens is Friday is September 2nd. I'll even pull up this little calendar in the bottom right hand of my screen. Friday is September 2nd. We come into the long weekend. We come back on September 6th, okay? And September 6th, we come back. We got one week until the CPI data on the 13th, and then we have one week after that a Federal Reserve meeting where they're expected to hike between 50 and 75 basis points. It's going to come quick. It's going to come fast. Keep your fingers ready, man. This S&P, it's rolling over as we speak, and we're in a dicey area right now. You're coming into the lows we had yesterday of about 4,020. Zooming in just on yesterday's action during the market, we made a low just at about 11 a.m. Eastern time, only a few points of where we're trading below right now. 4,017, the low intraday yesterday. You got the S&Ps trading down by 10 points right now. NASDAQ 100 rolls over, trading down 18. Dow off 40, Russell. Really will them all, but Russell negative by six tenths percent. Thanks for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got live programming. My dad, he's back in the saddle today at three. Nazel Chapman is up next, folks. Tiger Technicians Hour. Have a great Tuesday.